Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Desiree Sprav. I'm the founder of Desired Doulas. And today we are going to be talking about branding 101 for birth workers, okay? So this is a part of a series that I'm doing as I transition Desired Doulas over to an organization that focuses on birth worker wellness, empowerment, and sustainability, okay? So come on in, come on in. Let me know, even if you're watching the replay, what type of birth worker are you? Are you a birth doula? Are you a postpartum doula, a lactation consultant? Um, are you a childbirth educator, a prenatal yogi? How are you showing up? Are you a midwife? How are you showing up in the birth worker space? So that is my first question to you all. And uh, I'll wait for some people to join, but I'm just gonna go forward, all right? So branding 101, let's say that you are a new birth worker, you're excited, you're like, oh wow, I love this space, I love everything about what I'm doing, what I learned in my program, it just feels amazing. And then you get overwhelmed and you're like, oh, wait a minute, how am I going to show up on social media? How am I going to um, brand myself? How do I get clients? How do I do this? How do I do that? It feels so over the top. It feels so overwhelming. I have absolutely been there. And as I have different iterations of how I want to show up in the world, it pops up again, right? So I know uh, for myself, when I first became a birth worker in 2019, officially 2019, I was saying to myself, okay, I love this space, I love this world, and I started telling every everybody, everybody that I knew that this is what I'm changing my life to. If you don't know, I used to work in aerospace supply chain management at the time, and I was just telling everyone, telling everyone, I'm gonna be a doula. And uh, some people thought I was crazy, some people said, like, mm, that's on brand. <laughs> Um, but I was talking to one of my friends and he was like, oh, so you're going to be an entrepreneur. And I was like, oh, never even crossed my mind that that is the world that I was going into when I said that I want to be a birth worker. It did not occur to me that I was simultaneously signing up to become an entrepreneur as well. Just for point of clarification, just because you're a doula does not mean that you need to be an entrepreneur or a small business owner. You can work with an agency, you can work with a program, you do not have to do that. This is particularly for the doulas and the birth workers who are interested in building a brand and building um, a business, right? That's not for everyone. So I was like, ah, I'm becoming an entrepreneur. I really, really need to like get my entrepreneur hat on at the same time, I um, just wasn't prepared for that space. So I decided, okay, I'm just gonna focus on the work. And before anyone goes deep into the branding in any type of business that they're doing, focus in on the work first and foremost, okay? You don't wanna get overwhelmed trying to figure out what your name is, figure out the color scheme and figure out the logo and the branding before you start doing the work. Do the work and the rest will come, okay? So let's um, start off with that first and foremost. Get your feet wet and that's how you get an understanding of the type of birth worker that you want to be. Do you want to be a birth worker for, I don't know, LeBron James' wife? Do you want to be a birth worker for those who may not have the funds? Do you want to be a birth worker for everyone? Do you want to be... A traditional birth worker do you want to be a um, let's see you know a birth worker in the medical space you just got to figure out your groove and you won't know your groove until you hey guys until you um, actually start doing the work so I really recommend before you overwhelm yourself with all this information that I'm about to share really think about how do I want to show up, right? I had to go to a ton of hospital births before I realized, like, that's not for me. <laughs> um, I, you know, that's not, that's not how I desire to show up in a birth. 
okay? And um, you just decide that as you do the work, all right? So now you've done the work, you're figuring it out, you're starting to see how you show up in all these different spaces. Now, let's talk about branding. What does branding even mean? So when you are talking about branding, it essentially means, okay, I know that I want people to have a certain identifier that lets them know that, oh, it's Desiree speaking. Oh, it's Susan speaking. Oh, it's Alexis speaking. You know, so it's a, a little bit of a identifier for who is in the space. You know, like just how we know Coca-Cola and McDonald's and Nike. It just very clearly shows who is speaking, who is in the space. And so that is what branding is. So it's a part of marketing, but it is not necessarily like the sales and funnels and things of that nature. It's um, a little bit different. It's the identity that you have with your business. Okay, so you have the branding. Let's see, let me make sure. Okay, so you want to focus on um, some things like how, well, firstly, first and foremost, you want to figure out who is your audience, okay? Who are you talking to? That is so important because you don't want to, I don't know, how do I say this? Some people say to do this, some people say don't do this, so take it with a grain of salt. But you genuinely don't, generally don't want to be talking to everyone, okay? You want to focus in and hone on hone in on who your target audience is okay so that it makes it like really helpful for you to be able to niche down a bit and that's how you get more people interested in what it is that you specifically are talking about okay so who's your audience is it black women is it indigenous women is it um, people who are more spiritually grounded is it um, you know, the everyday American, who is your target, okay? So know that kind of first and foremost, okay? I, when I first started, I was just like, hey everybody, I wanna talk to you, and you, and you. That's not really how it goes, right? So now I'm leaning um, a lot more into, for Desire Doulas, I'm leaning into targeting and connecting with birth workers in particular. And then for my other organization, I'm focusing on business professionals, right? So it kind of niches down um, who you are speaking to, okay? So you know your audience now. Now think about how do you want them to feel when they interact with you, when they see your posts, when they see anything that you write online. What do you, what do you want them to feel, okay? So for um, myself, all of my brands, Everything um, feels very warm and loving and inviting. That is the um, energy that I like to cultivate for anyone um, that I am working with. And if you're watching or watching the replay, don't forget, tell me what kind of birth work you are, or if you're a supporter, where you're calling, calling from, this is like 1990s, where you are watching from, and um, that could be really helpful, just so I know who is a part of the Desire Doulas community. So that being said, um, it's always going to be very warm and inviting and very clean, right? I want everything to feel clean. If um, everything is like very white, um, gold, bright colors. Oh, hoping to be a doula and a midwife. I love that. I love that. Um, tell me where you're located, please. Um, yes, so it's bright colors. I use the color orange. Why? Because orange is a... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have a Howard University student in here. Hello, I'm a Howard University alumni. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I was in the School of Business, graduated in 2012, 11 years ago. It's crazy. So much has changed since that time. But hey, shout out to you, shout out to you. So, um, uh, so I use bright colors, right? Because I love bright colors. My grandma loved bright colors. And it makes you feel really good and joyous and 
um, it kind of like brings down any anxiety, right? I, I'm not into necessarily dark, as you can see from my place, everything is white, gold, green, orange, my couch is orange, right? So it's a certain vibe in, um, that invites people to feel a certain way. So that's what you want to think about um, when you want to identify how do you want people to feel, okay? So, um, also your logo, right? Your logo should be a representation of you. Some logos look like they were done, you know, real quick, quick. And some logos look really, really nice and thought out. And that kind of tells people, oh, okay, this is the um, quality I can expect, right? Some people like it really simple. Some people like um, a lot more going on. Uh, just think about how do you want the streets to talk about you? Do you want them to say, hey, she really knows her stuff. She's really given some really quality information. She's really um, showing up and showing out in the world. That's how you want to determine uh, how you want to show up. So that is for colors, that is for fonts, right? There are certain fonts that feel really aggressive. There are certain fonts that feel really nice and fluid, right? There are certain fonts that feel like this is what I'm saying and I'm saying it with my chest, okay? So you have um, different fonts that give different feelings too. Um, what images do you wanna show? What imagery for birth workers? Is it a belly? Is it a mom and dad and a um, baby? Is it a um, you know gender non-conforming family? What is the imagery that you want to show with your um, brand? What do you want people to connect you with, okay? So those are a lot of different options that you can think about as you're thinking about how do you want my audience to feel, excuse me, how do you want your audience to feel, okay? So let's see. Yep, we talked about that. And then last two points is, what is your mission, okay? Don't be roaming through these doula streets, these birth worker streets without identifying what it is that you want to do. What is your mission? What is your goal? What is your vision for um, the work that you are doing? For Desire Doulas, I want to support with birth worker wellness, empowerment, and sustainability. Why? Because that's all things that I experienced in my last four or so years in birth work. Thinking about how do I want other birth workers to come up in this space and not have to manage the way I had to manage with my own personal wellness or with my um, empowerment because sometimes we cannot feel so empowered in these spaces especially as black and BIPOC um, birth workers and then also the sustainability the burnout rate for birth workers is two years right so that means that after two years she was like I'm out of here I'm done I'm done so we're training thousands and thousands of doulas but nobody's holding the doulas that's a problem yeah so uh, that is really the mission of Desire Doulas. And so that keeps me grounded in um, what it is that I am looking to accomplish. And remember that the mission statement and the vision statement is going to evolve over time. Okay, very normal, very standard. It just means that, um, that you, mm, you know, change which is fine. <laughs> and then the last thing, and I'll answer this question in just a moment. So, and the last thing is figuring out what is your voice? How do you want to continue to convey to your audience? So for me, um, I'm enhancing my voice now, and that's why I'm doing a lot of these lives, because um, a lot of people may not hear or experience my personality so much. Um, and it's very important that people know what is my voice? What are the things that I'm looking to say and convey and how do I want to do that? So that is another reason as to why we are um, sharing what our voice is. So the question underneath says, how is it balancing entrepreneurship and doula work or birth work period? 
it is certainly a balance and it can be a challenge, right? So you have to think about um, multiple things. You have to think about what type of birth worker is appropriate for you in this season, okay? So there are going to be seasons in your life where it makes sense for you to be full-on, full-time birth worker um, or doula, midwife, etc. And then there's going to be a season where that's not really serving you or your client so much to be just boom, 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 boom right? Um, you need to identify what those seasons are. Um, I don't think it's very sustainable for someone to take the whole year and just knocking out four or five, six births a month for in an entire year. Not very sustainable. Um, and so you have to think about how do you want to show up in the space? For me, um, I have seasons where I am working with uh, a lot of birth clients and then there are seasons where I'm more so doing childbirth education or maybe just postpartum services. Right now, I'm in a season of needing a lot more sustainability, so I'm more so focusing on the childbirth education portion. And um, I'll do birth work as I feel called, uh, excuse me, I feel I would do birth doula work as I feel called to, right? So you just want to identify what season are you in? What ca uh, capability do you have in this particular season? Do you have the support of your community to help you as you journey through? That's really important because as you balance the entrepreneurship side um, outside of you know, the birth work, you still have admin tasks, yeah? So you have to uh, manage your contracts and manage your um, CRM system, which is the client relationship management tool. You have to manage your books, which is um, like bookkeeping. You have to manage your taxes. You have to manage, um, actually, I'm gonna change that narrative. You get to manage, right? It's a joy um, and an honor to be in entrepreneurship. So I get to manage my books. I get to manage um, my marketing and my sales funnels and things like that. And so you have to find balance. So I try for Mondays to be kind of like my admin day. Right now I'm in a season of like growing the new shift of Desire Doula. So I'm doing way more than one admin day. Um, but you just identify how do you want to show up in this space? Um, birth work, midwifery, childbirth education, lactation consultant, um, newborn care specialist, like which version of yourself is going to show up in this season and then find the associated balance with that. Um, when you're starting off, you may not have an assistant, right? I'm, um, I took several years, maybe three, four years before I got an assistant, I would have suggested uh, Desiree, you know, get an assistant earlier in your career, but here we is. But, <laughs> uh, and that helps me with a ton of the admin tasks that I don't have the mental capacity to manage through. So you just identify over time what makes sense. You can get um, an assistant in the Philippines, you know, it's a way, way cheaper and they, they also um, are really good. My assistant is actually in America. Well, and she's the bomb.com shout out to you and but yeah those are different ways that you can kind of balance entrepreneurship and birth work as well as your actual life like your um your partner your kids your family you know it's really a juggle and you won't get it right all the time right that's just kind of like a part of it you won't get it right all the time um, it's just saying, okay, didn't do that one right. Let me, let me hold, rain it on back in. Okay, <laughs> so that's an excellent, excellent question. Okay, do you have any other questions that I can support with? Um, thank you for being here. And anybody who's watching the replay, just add any questions that you may have. I think that good information was shared. Please share this with whomever you think can benefit. But just remember that um, before you get so deep into the branding and the logos and the this, that, and the third, just remember to do the work first and foremost. 
And when you do the work, um, you kind of get a clearer understanding of the person and the birth worker that you want to be. Okay? So have a beautiful day. And I'll see y'all next time. If you are interested in finding out more about Desire Doulas, um, please know that you can sign up for the newsletter at the link in my bio. Have a beautiful day and uh, we'll talk soon. Bye.